All right, I'm gonna go over a kind of review for these worksheets. Uh, this is the first worksheet. Uh, should be reasonably straightforward. Um, the first part here is to find the complement. Now the complement is simply what would the other strand be using our rules of making double-stranded DNA. So in other words, if I have a C here, uh, what would I have here? Well, we know that wherever there's a C on one side of the DNA, you would have a G here. So what you would want to do is put a G right here. Here's a T, so that would be an A. An A, that's going to be a T. And here's a C, so another G. And a G, so C. So just complete this. Pretty straightforward. You only got 21 bases to work with, so uh, to, to do, so it's not a long assignment. It's not like you're doing a thousand of them. Like on a re real piece of DNA, you use a computer for that. All right, so just this is just to show me that you do understand that we're on one strand of the DNA. You would have a C, you would have a G here, or a T would have an A here, an A, T, etc. Um, now transcribe. Transcribe to mRNA. This is making a DNA complement. So with DNA, you use what? Ts. With RNA, you use what? Us. So anywhere up here that you would have put a T up here, you're going to put a U down here. So here, this is a C, so that's a G, same as it is here. Here it's a T, so you would put an A, right? But here, here we have an A, and up here you put A, you put T down here. Well, here, A, you would put a U. So in this case, we are transcribing it, and what you would do then is anywhere that you would normally have put a T up here, you just put a U. Again, pretty easy. Now, the question here, Compare and contrast the results from number one and two. What are the biological implications of the differences and the similarities of the two sequences of DNA polymerase and RNA polymerase? So first, let me explain what a polymerase is. A polymerase is a protein that is essentially a copy machine. All right, now DNA polymerase makes DNA. So here on the first one, we're using DNA polymerase because the resulting down here produced uh, a double-stranded DNA strand. In other words, we kind of unzipped it and we're, we're kind of copying the DNA, and that is done by DNA polymerase. So you see polymerase, just from now on, think copy machine, all right? RNA polymerase doesn't produce DNA, it produces RNA, so it reads DNA. So this top one here is DNA, but we're gonna make an RNA. So an RNA is single-stranded, all right, here we're copying and making essentially double-stranded uh, molecule. Here, RNA is single-stranded. We're going to read one side of the DNA um, strand, this one here. It's going to unzip, and the protein will attach somewhere. And essentially, it's going to copy this. And the copy machine here is RNA polymerase, so it's going to make an RNA copy. And when you make an RNA copy, it is single-stranded, and it replaces where you would normally have put a, a, a T right here, for instance, you would put a U. So what are the biological implications of these differences? Well, certainly here you're you're doing what? In the cell, when you duplicate DNA, what are you doing? You're doing this for reproductive reasons. Over here, you're using it for what? What, what is the reason for making an RNA? The reason for making a copy of the DNA is what? I'll give you this one. It's to reproduce, for the cell to reproduce. But that is not the reason for making an RNA. So you need to tell me, uh, one, this one is for uh, reproduction. This one, however, is for something else, and so you need to compare and contrast those and explain, perhaps, why they're different. Why is this one double-stranded and why is this one single-stranded? Uh, that would also be uh, a useful thing to tell me. So there are some hints on wh what you should say in number three. Uh, what is the position of the three nucleotides that made up the, make up the start codon? So you have to go and look up the genetic code. Now that's not easy, um, that's in the book, and you have to read on, realize that these letters are read, all right, by the ribosome. Now up here we're talking about polymerases, that's different. Here we're talking about the RNA and you're reading it by the ribosome. So it's the ribosome is a chemical device, a computer more or less, 
that can read instructions and put together their protein. Now the instructions are in what we would call words, but instead of words, we call them codons. And codons have three letters. And so there's a special codon, all right? And that codon is what? That codon is three letters and it's a start codon. And I will tell you when you look up the uh, genetic code, which um, I will make another video just talking about how to do uh, translation, uh, you would read, you would find the start codon code. And what is that one? Well, that is an A, a U, and a G. So where is there an A, U, or G? Well, the, the A, U, G is going to be in the mRNA, and you have to actually find an A, U, G in this answer here. So this answer, whatever you put here, is the sequence that you're looking for, and you're looking for an A, U, and a G. So in other words, after you translate this, or transcribe it, all right, sorry, transcribe. Very keep, Be very careful to keep track of the term transcribe versus the term translate or replicate. All of those are different things. So you need to find the three numbers, so 1, 2, 3, 4, through 21, that produce a start codon. So a start codon, you got to look that up, find out what the three letters for a start codon for a start codon R, all right, find the three letters, and wherever you find these three letters up here in your answer here, are the, that'll be the numbers that you put in this. So these are the positions, the one through 21. So that's how you do that one, all right? All right, and there is not a stop codon in number two. So number two, you need this thing called a stop codon. You need to read about what they do. What is a start codon? What is a stop codon? They're in, they're in the book. There are videos. I, I cover it in videos. So make sure you find out what a stop codon is. There are three possible stop, uh, stop codons. So you, you're going to have to find one of those. And what you are looking for is, well, there isn't a stop in here. How would you make one? In other words, there are, there are many types of mutations in uh, that can occur. Some of them are you just change the letter, all right? But others are insertions and deletions, and there's a term for that called an indel. And an indel means that you added a letter. So an indel, an insertion, that's the first type, del is delete. An insertion might be you add a letter between this C and G, maybe you add a T here. Well, that's a type of mutation uh, called an insertion, or together their insertions and deletions are called indels. And of course it moves it down. You now have 22 letters here instead of 21 because you added one. You might also have a deletion. So you have, a, 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 that's also a type of indel in which you would take out 13, which of course now would give you 20 in this sequence. So those are mutations, and sometimes those are much worse than just changing the letter. When you take a letter out, you change something that we're going to learn about called the reading frame. And that, so a lot of times, insertions and deletions are much worse than just changing the letter. In fact, almost always they are. All right, so what I want you to do in this one is uh, I want you to create a stop codon. So... Uh, you're going to have to change a letter, all right? So I didn't say insert or delete. I said what change or mutation would create a stop codon in number two. So I don't want you to insert or delete here in this one. I want you to change one of the letters that will actually create a stop codon. Now, that's going to, I'm going to do another video where I'm going to show you exactly how these are red. They're red three at a time. All right. And or you can read about it. There are videos I'm about to post. I'm about to post uh, that you probably should. Uh, you probably should read about it first. Uh, try to figure it out. Uh, watch a video maybe and then come to this worksheet. So but I want you to understand what you're trying to do in this worksheet. You're going to try and create by changing one of these letters to some other letter. You're going to make a stop code on. All right. And let, let's see here. And make sure you understand where do they occur. Well, I've kind of given that away by where I was looking at. 
which one was I looking at? Was I looking at DNA or RNA above? That tells you the answer uh, uh, where that hint is coming from. All right, then we translate it. So translate the mRNA sequence with the stop cone on and without it. Now here, this the number of slots here are giving you a, a hint as to what's going on here. Now translate means we're no longer in A, A, U, C, G, T's. We are in proteins. So now you're going to have 20 potential letters. So translate the mRNA at the start. Translate it without the mutation. Translate means we're now going to go to amino acids. So you have different letters. There are going to be 20 different letters you can choose from to put in here. Now, without the stop code on, it's going to go to the end. All right, so it's going to go all the way to the end. So you're going to read it wherever it starts. You're going to go to the end and then wherever uh, so this is telling you that you're only going to go what um, how many letters are in a codon there are three so if i have one amino acid here and one amino acid here then this is telling you that your protein is only two amino acids long all right and then there are three nucleotides all right you read these this three letters at a time so that means it's only the part that gets read. There are only six letters that get read in the situation here. Here, you get what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's going to be 21 letters read up here. So that, that should give you a hint as to where the star codon is. Now, if you're following me, that's uh, if you think about it, it's going to tell you exactly by looking at the number of amino acids produced, it's going to tell you kind of where to look for your start codon. All right. Now, we haven't done this. That's what this exercise is for, if you can read about it. Um, I'm going to do some other examples uh, in the um, uh, in a, another video that I'm posting. So you might want to watch that one before you watch this one. If you haven't seen that one, you're going to know what I'm talking about if you've seen the other one. All right. If you haven't seen the other one, then you may not have any idea what I'm talking about here. So make sure you watch these in the order that I post them. All right. Uh, now there is an insertion. All right. And I talked about that. And you're going to put a C somewhere between three, between three and four. So where is three and four? Well, three and four are right here. And you're going to put an insertion. But did I say we're inserting it in the DNA or in the RNA? Where would you put an insertion? An insertion is going to be in the DNA, all right? So we need to go back up to the top one, all right? This is where mutations occur. The RNA is just a copy of your DNA. Mutations occur, all right, in the original, all right? So in DNA is where they move. So if we're going to insert a C between 3 and 4, we're inserting it right here. And that means what? Then your RNA, if we're putting a C here, you're going to be what? Making a G here. So uh, I'm down here. All right. You're going to be uh, the transcribed part. Okay. Now these are the same right here. So you can, you know, DNA complement. But so it, it really doesn't. You need to look at two. Two, they're the same. So it really doesn't matter which one. But I just want to make sure that you understand that the original DNA is the one we're putting the C in. So if we put a C right here, or here, they're both DNA, um, then you're going to get an extra line. It would be like putting an extra line right here, and you're going to put a G down here, and you're going to make this 22 long. All right, so that's what's going on here with an ins... Where is it? Between 3 and 4, sorry. Right here, you're going to push this down one. You're going to end up with 2. You're going to put an insertion, and that is a type of mutation, uh, insertions. All right, so we um, you try and do that one. Uh, let's see, what is the new mRNA? So remember, it's going to be 22 long. Um, and what is the translated product? Well, now you're going to have to translate it again. Do exactly what you did essentially here, all right, before we added the stop codon. So your answer is going to be uh, roughly the same length as this one. You've added one uh, nucleic acid. so. Let's see if you can figure out what happens. Uh, but uh, this one is with the stop codon. All right, so it's short because we, and 
that is the way it works. If you do, if there are no stop codons in a gene, then your polymerase will just run all the way to the end of the RNA and translate the whole thing. But most of the time, there's a stop codon. It's a signal to say stop copying, and it, the RNA polymerase will fall off. All right. Now, that is not um, that is the normal situation. But if it's not there, it will go with all the way to the end. So we're using this as if there is no stop codon. You're going to go all the way to the end of your RNA uh, down here. And that should give you some hints as well. Um, let's see. So, in fact, I kind of imply that. A, what is the mRNA? So notice I made it 22. And then it's what is its translated product? So, and then here is the protein that this sequence would produce. So, in other words, you're going to read these three at a time. But what three? What's the order? Now, the order, in other words, codons are three letters. So if I started at the beginning, I would be reading these three, all right, and that would tell me what goes here. Then I would read these three, oops, let's just get, yeah, it doesn't do it. These three, and I would tell me what goes here. Then I would go, so I'll, I'll number them since the, the highlighter doesn't work real well. Seven, eight, and nine would tell me what goes here, 10, 11, 12 here. Uh, 13, wait, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. All right. So how many? If we started at the beginning, there would be 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So you're starting more or less at the beginning, telling you that where is your start code on? All right. Hint, hint. All right. We have no stop. All right. And then that should tell you that, oh, where should you be looking for your stop if I've given you the hint that there are only two? The start stayed at the same place. Now you have a stop somewhere, well, somewhere before we get to the end. I won't tell you. All right. Now, what would have happened if any other nucleotide besides C had been inserted between the two positions? So in other words, what I'm asking here is we inserted a 3 and a 4, and when you have that mutation, that's going to alter... Uh, the sequence that you get. So you, you add the C, all right, it alters the sequence, and it might have changed something. It might not have. But if I had put a, the C is important because it allows something to be there, all right, a particular sequence. I don't want to give it away. But if I had put something else there, something else would have been there. And I want you to tell me what would have happened if I'd used any other letter besides C in uh, what number was that? Um, right here it says you had, uh, where was that? Oh, right here. Inserts a C between three and four. Uh, what is the news? So if this had been something other than a C, something would have happened. I want you to tell me down here what that would have been. Uh, now, We've only talked briefly in some of the videos about a Tata box. All right. Now, what I want you to do is add a Tata box and a termination signal. And so you should, by watching the videos, already know what those are. All right. I also want you to indicate three and five prime positions. So you're going to have to figure that out. All right. So remember, this is this is going to be in the DNA, not the RNA. So take the DNA sequence, the original one, in number one. And you need to add what's called a Tata box to it. All right, so look on some videos, know where this goes. It's a sequence, TATA, that attracts the RNA polymerase, and it's going to be essentially the start of a gene. Now, there's also a thing called a termination sequence. If you've watched the videos, you should know what one of those are. All right, so just know where they go. All right, and also in the book, it explains three and five or prime orientation. So you should be pay attention to that. These are things that you need to know on the test. And uh, you'll also need to uh, tell me that on the quiz. So this can be a little uh, confusing. You got to read a lot to figure out what all these parts are. All right. And hopefully uh, if you have questions, you can Zoom with me. Email me and say, I don't understand any of this. Please Zoom with me and I will be happy to do that with you. All right. This is the most important stuff you're going to do in this class. We have to learn transcription and translation. 
For you to understand everything else and how the cell works, you must understand transcription and translation.